Dr. Tecchino. Thank you, Dr. Mufti. Thank you, Dr. Sultan, for the opportunity. Thank you for all our Saudi friends, many of you, which I know since a long time. The subject I'm going to talk about disappeared. Uh -huh. I hope I would, was going to talk about it. What's wrong? Ah. It was there. Okay, there's some tension on the cable. It's about single incision, its benefits, and its pitfalls. Single incision now starts to have a, quite a history because we, we started it in, with routine clinical cases in 2007 and with some effort in developing the technique even before. So today we cannot say it's a really a new technique anymore. And but at that time, we really, to be sincere, we hoped it would take up much faster than what it actually did. Uh, the first series I published, uh, uh, first series, not first cases, nowadays for four or five years ago, and, uh, and a lot has changed from our pioneering work, uh, from using multiple single ports, still achieving a good, uh, decent, uh, uh, final result, but technology has helped out a lot. What do you really need to be able to do single incision? I used to say very little. You need an incision, of course. You need an access port, a dedicated access port, because today it's not uh, justifiable to try to use not dedicated instruments. A scope, instruments, and very little specific competence, because this is still standard laparoscopy. It's not endoscopy, it's not nodes, it's still laparoscopy, where you use the principles of laparoscopy only with a one single access through the umbilicus. And still having all the advantages of a, a virtually scarless surgery with reduced pain, reduced invasiveness, and the psychological benefits for the patients. But in order to be able to do a procedure by single incision, whatever procedure, now I'm taking the example of a gas river pass, one should adapt the procedure to the method of access. Gas river pass is not a standard procedure. I think it's the least standard procedures that we are doing today because the pouch size is varies, the pouch shape varies, short, narrow, long, and the biliary and elementary tract lengths vary very much according to the surgeon's preference. So, if we adapt the procedure to our uh, personal preference, there should not be any resistance to try to adapt the procedure uh, in order to make it possible to be performed by single incision. Retrocolic, retrogastric, uh, circular stapler, this is clearly maybe possible, but unnecessarily complex. What we suggest is what we, I used to call a double loop approach, which is a modification of the original Lanwart technique. You measure, you do your first anastomosis, you measure again, you do your second anastomosis, and then cut in between. This is just an example for a UNY. A similar example could be made for a sleeve gastrectomy, a similar example for a BPD or for any type of procedure that we are performing. The access ports has evolved. This is the covidian series ports. I like a lot the covidian. I use also the tripod from uh, Olympus, which is a very nice port also. Uh, and they have evolved from the first uh, device to 15 millimeter ports uh, and very good for doing a sleeve gastrectomy. So the, the, the industry has helped us a lot in introducing new and new devices for the access, for grasping and dissecting, long instrument, curved instrument, articulating instrument, 
Many times I just use one single curved instrument reusable. So in fact, in terms of devices, special devices that I need to do a single incision procedure is the access port and one curved instrument. All the other devices are the same that I use during normal laparoscopic surgery. Maybe we to pay some attention of having a, an extra long, uh, yeah, sorry, an extra long stapler, curved, uh, curved uh, cartridges, and all different types, particularly this one I like a lot to use for the last firing uh, at the angle of his, but the factory and the producers of staplers and devices really offer us so many different devices that we have the difficulty of choosing. Vision, this is what I normally prefer, but you can also use a standard straight, long, 50 centimeters long uh, rigid scope from stores. Retraction, which at the beginning was something we thought, how, how do we retract the liver? And uh, which was also true for standard laparoscopy. And when we started using this stitch that I put on the diaphragmatic pillar, we stopped using a liver retractor even in standard laparoscopy. So there's some benefits which comes back from single incision to standard laparoscopy. So, future of robotics. So there is a plant of technology around single incision. But still, despite this, it's not so widespread as it should be. Why? There must be some limitations. Limitation li li linked to the patient, certainly. The distance from the navel to the f operating field in case of bypass to the angle of his or to any other organ to the pelvis in case of a colonic resection. This certainly poses a limitation which is a physical limitation. But the vision that you can have with a, during single incision is no compromise to what you use to have in standard laparoscopy. This is using a flexible scope from Olympus. This is a curved fixed instrument. And here we are dissecting the angle of his during a sleeve gastrectomy. And uh, regardless the size of the bougie that you like to use, 36, 39, this is a 39. Regardless your preferred technique, I, what I, is the meaning of showing this short video is that you can actually do what you personally prefer to do with no compromise in the technique. The extra long instrument. Of course, there is also the issue that, that the hands are crossed at the umbilicus, so this is my right hand and that is my left hand. But believe me, it's a, only a matter of training when your brain will start thinking differently. You, you won't even notice that you are actually crossed. So, uh, I wanted to show this detail, this step, because this is many times a critical step in both in the gastric bypass and in a sleeve gastrectomy. And to show how you were just retracting the liver with a stitch and with good uh, vision, what, what kind of good vision you can have. Dissection and stapling is the simplest thing to positive articulation, curved tip. Is the simplest uh, thing that you can do in, uh, uh, in laparoscopy and also in single incision. You can go to more complex steps. This is using a straight camera. It's not the Olympus, it's a Storz. The quality of vision is not as good, but acceptable. We are using an articulating instrument and one straight instrument. So you see, it's only, only one extra instrument you need to perform your procedure. We are looking for the angle of his in this case. And we are go to going to measure the bowel to do the gastric bypass. This is a step which is more complex than doing a, a sleeve, a resection of the stomach. Yeah. But <coughs> with patience and with good exposure, it can be done. And there is the right angle. want to be sure, change my hands.
a lot of patience. You have to be very calm and patient. So that's the price. And then we will measure. And the measurement. Then more complex steps, like suturing. And suturing, this is a, a, an anastomosis, gastrojejunal anastomosis. And for suturing, I definitely, definitely like to use the end of stitch. We try to use a, a regular needle holder with a, maybe with a V-lock suture, which helps to, to, tie, to tie the knots. But really, the type of presentation that you have for the structure that you have to suture is something which is, comes very natural and normal for the end of stitch. You see it's going in and out straight while for using a needle holder you would need a rotating movement which would be very difficult with one <coughs> axis. So, so what I really believe now is that the limitation to the widespread diffusion of single incision is the surgeon, it's not the technique. Because it's proven feasible that you can do it. Or somebody might say, well, you are an enthusiast, you are skilled with this technique. Uh, not, not everybody is skilled. And when we start training a big lab animal, people, instead of crossing the instruments, start crossing their hands and assuming very complex and strange positions. So this is really the initial difficulty. But I really think that training is important and with some patience and trying to hmm, teach to, to the youngest surgeons, everybody can achieve a relaxed position and start working in an effective way. So I think we should really have no prejudice in, to this technique. I think it will be growing and growing, particularly with uh, more simple procedures like a sleeve, uh, maybe less or more complex procedure, but it's something that our patients will appreciate a lot. It, they will appreciate it because despite their obese, with a huge <coughs> body, they still own body and they still appreciate that we reduce to the minimum the invasiveness and the integrity of that body. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you, Robert. Thank you very much. And thank you for not uh, exceeding your time as well. I ha I've been being pressured by the president of the Congress to carry on because of the sake of time. So unless there is a very burning uh, question, we will uh, go ahead. The Fahad Yalla will have a burning, one burning question. And depends from your previous uh, experience. I would not start with a gastric bypass. I would start with a sleeve if you yeah. sleeve is your practice, because the sleeve is definitely, definitely a much easier procedure. But uh, if you the, the difficult part is uh, uh, the suturing, which is really different from what you're normally doing. Uh, I would not be able to tell the number, but certain uh, 20, 30 cases, maybe you get your operating time down and to a reasonable amount. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. We will uh, go to the next speaker.